tonight the afflictions of the righteous psalm 34 and verse 19 help us spirit of the living god we depend on your wisdom the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous then it says but the lord delivered him out of them all two very powerful information number one many are the afflictions of the righteous and then number two it says the lord delivered him out of them all say amen, amen. second scripture please romans chapter 8 and verse 28 romans 8 28 the bible says and we know this is an information that is privy only to believers it is not general knowledge it says and we know we who are of the fold we who are people who have submitted to the word he said there is an information we know that gives us the staying power through negative seasons it says and we know that all things work together for good not to everybody to them that love god to them that are called according to his purpose can we look at one more scripture second corinthians chapter 4 please 17 and 18 second corinthians chapter 4 17 and 18 here's what paul says for our light affliction which is but for a moment he says walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory 18 says while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen he says for the things which are seen are temporal subject to change but the things which are not seen are eternal may the lord bless the reading of his word hallelujah now to start tonight the bible teaches us that we have been called as believers into a life of victory that for the believer there is a very definite implication when you give your life to Jesus Christ as we know you receive of his life and you surrender your life to him the Bible tells us number one that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son number two the bible tells us that you become the righteousness of god in christ because now you have access through christ to that gift of righteousness are we together then the bible tells us according to john chapter 10 and verse 10 that for believing in jesus you have access to that life I am come that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and when we get to verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Greek word zoe. 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, it says, but that the world through him might be saved. So there are many implications um, to being a believer. When you become a believer, you are not an ordinary person. Among other things, the Bible tells us that you are the righteous. Are we together? You are a bona fide recipient of the life of God. You now sustain the potential to walk in victory. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57, the Bible says, Now thanks be to God, 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, 5, 7. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory and that that victory comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's important for us to know that the Bible teaches in a very clear and unmistaken way that believers are called to a life of victory. You must have that at the back of your mind. Number two is that the basis for the believer's victory in the kingdom is the finished work of Christ. You must be able to defend your confidence as to the fact that you should live a victorious life because situations and circumstances will challenge that victory. The basis for the believer's victory in the kingdom is the finished work of Christ. That means the summation of everything Jesus did from his death, his burial, and his resurrection. This is the basis 
Listen, as simple as this point is, if you do not know what is the basis for your victory, you will just become a religious person who is speaking what seems to be right, but it does not sustain any power in the spirit because the anointing is released on the strength of understanding, understanding, understanding. It is not what you say or do that releases power. It is the understanding that supports what you say or what you do. So this is a kingdom that is predicated upon understanding. The spirituality and the correctness of your activity notwithstanding. That means you can act correctly. You can even speak correctly. But from a standpoint of ignorance, it will not produce any results. Are we together? The sons of Sceva were saying the correct thing. We adjure you by Jesus. The statement was correct. But the requisite understanding that will release the power to back what they were saying was not there. So it is not just what we do in terms of its correctness it is the spiritual understanding that supports our speakings and our doings that releases the power of god ephesians 4 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts in fact the assignment of the prince of this world as paul taught us is to blind the minds of the people are we together now so the Bible teaches that we have been called onto a life of victory in Christ and the Bible teaches us that the singular basis for the believers victory is on the strength of that which Christ has done of course in partnership with our understanding and our acting upon that truth even in faith are we following so far the third point I want us to know as a foundation tonight is that the Bible is also very clear as to the fact that there will be moments of affliction. Listen now. Haven't established the fact that the word of God is clear as to the believer's heritage and destiny of perpetual victory. And the Bible tells us that the basis for our victory is Christ and that which he has done. Are we together? But the Bible also is not silent as to the fact that believers will face moments of afflictions, losses, pain, and challenges. You would think the Bible should be silent about these issues, but the Bible is very clear as to the fact that there will be moments of afflictions, there will be moments of losses, there will be moments of pain and challenges in the life of the believer. Psalm 20, please, from verse 1 to 5. The psalmist wrote it so beautifully. He said, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So the psalmist identifies such a moment in the life of the believer called the day of trouble. This was not negative confession. He's saying in my study, even as a king, I have come to a point where there are time periods in the lives of men, even those who are of the fold, even the covenant people, that there is such a day called the day of trouble. It says, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee, verse 2, send thee help in that day of trouble from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion, verse 3. It says, remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt offerings. We're reading to 5, verse 4. Grant thee according to thine own heart to fulfill all thy counsel. The last verse. It says, we will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God will we set up our banners. It says, the Lord will fulfill all our petitions. So the psalmist is saying that there is a day called the day Day of trouble hallelujah several examples we can find in scripture of men and women who were purported to be righteous and yet had moments and seasons of very very disheartening conditions an example was as we find in scripture an example is Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1 to 3 the Bible tells us that after these things the word of the lord came to abram in a vision saying fear not abram he says i am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward can you imagine this kind of salutation and yet abraham was in the midst of something that was a serious problem verse 2 it says and abraham said lord god what will thou give me seeing i go childless 
and the steward of my house is the Eliezer of Damascus verse 3 and Abraham said behold to me thou hast given no seed and lo one born in my house is my heir do you know what he was saying thank God for all these wonderful salutations but I'm in the middle of a situation this is what matters to me right now I go childless in fact when you read chapter 16 and verse 1 give us 16 verse 1 the Bible tells us now Sarai Abraham's wife bear him no children can you imagine that this this is Abraham that the Bible would call the friend of God this is Sarai his wife and yet even as people who were so close to God they had such an issue in their life trusting God for the fruit of the womb and the Bible is not silent about that story you would think the Bible would just wrap it up and say Abraham was a great man came from Ur of the Chaldeans was a noble man received a promise from God finally offered Isaac and became a great man that's an intelligent way to summarize the Bible but the Bible goes to be that detail to tell us the concerns of that man Abraham are we together example number two Israel in the land of Egypt the Bible records that Israel God's own chosen people his covenant people were in captivity you find that in Exodus chapter 1 um, the full text is 1 to 14 but let's jump to verse 8 for the sake of time hallelujah is someone learning already that the nation of Israel God's covenant people were in captivity and did you know for all that 430 years God still called them my people and they still identified him as their God and yet they were in captivity now there arose a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph verse 9 it says and he said unto his people behold I hope you know that the captivity of the nation of Israel started as a plan to manage fear and jealousy that was what led graduated to become 430 years of captivity behold the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we come on let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there fallen out any war they join also our enemies and fight us that was the whole basis for subjugating them there was a time they were equal in terms of ranking and privileges but another king came up and said no we can't let this happen one day they will become allies with our enemies and they will defeat us and so they suggested captivity and bondage as a strategy to keep them limited are we together now and verse 11 now for time the Bible says therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities Python and Ramesses these were gods in Egypt and you read down to 14 it just tells you the captivity that God's own people went through how will you imagine that God who is the mighty God is watching from heaven and not for two years not for 10 years this is the longest time officially recorded that God's people went into captivity consciously under their taskmasters hallelujah example number three is the mysterious story of job we find that in chapter one down to chapter two just write it for reference up till this day it has remained a theological debate as to the the real spiritual lesson behind the story of job because it takes extreme level of spiritual intelligence discernment work with god to be able to decipher the book of Job is, is laced with all kinds of confusion. It starts by telling us of a noble man, the greatest and the wisest as his time in the East. And the Bible records that he was a man that feared the Lord and eschewed evil. Qualified to be called a righteous man by the standard, whatever standard was there. Now the Bible tells us that there was a summon in the heavenlies. This is where the story gets very interesting and that satan was also there the bible never called him lucifer 
at this time it identifies him already as Satan this is a very disturbing scripture because when you read from the banishing of Satan from heaven the Bible says a place was no longer found for him in heaven and yet the Bible says Satan came among them so this can be an endless debate among theologians that's not our goal tonight I'm just showing you that there is such a disturbing reality and you find it in the Bible are we together now and then a discussion happens in heaven and based on the text Satan is given permission to touch everything around Job except his life then the Bible says that there was a day on earth can you see that the manifestation of affliction and all kinds of evil also work with times there was a day on earth for the execution of that which was finished in the spirit and the Bible says one report after report the sons his cattle all kinds of things happened to that man but I love something that the Bible says happened to Job it says that with all of these things that Job bowed his head and worshiped what an, what an interesting what an interesting expression do you know what it means that in one day you lose your daughters you lose your sons you lose your business you lose everything and the Bible says he shaved himself he fell down and worshiped example number four are we learning the Bible talks about a wonderful woman in Scripture called Ruth you find that in Ruth chapter 1 and we'll read from verse 1 to 5 now there are two women who had the privilege of their names as books of the Bible one is Esther the other is Ruth hallelujah the Bible says it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab he and his wife had two sons he's talking about Naomi now the Bible says his name was Elimelech and then the wife was Naomi and then they had two sons Malon and Chilion and they got married to Ruth and to Oprah are we together just rushing for sake of time let's go to verse 4 for the sake of time we're reading to five the Bible says they took them wives of the women of Moab and one was called Oprah and the other was called Ruth and they dwelt there about 10 years watch affliction watch tragedy the Bible says the two sons also died I don't know what kind of spirit was walking there but the husband of Naomi died and then the sons that got married to them also died the bible says and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband separated from them and you know the story that looked like the end of Ruth's life in fact the woman told them when you read the full text he said look go and find husbands for yourself just leave me I'm a woman with many sorrows and then Oprah went and Ruth refused and that led to a series of events that will finally connect her to Boaz and now you know from history that she was part of the genealogy of Jesus many are the afflictions of the righteous are we learning it says but the Lord delivered him from them all still giving examples example number five Jesus himself you would think because he's the son of the living God the creator of the ends of the earth he would be exempted from affliction when you read from Luke chapter 22 all through for sake of time you just write it the Bible tells us that Jesus himself got to a point where he had to stand before Pontius Pilate in fact right from Gethsemane he looked at the people when they came with swords and all of that he said why are you using knives to come and catch me I was all around with you in the temple what offense have I committed but this is your hour and the power of darkness he said am I right on that and Jesus was caught malhandled in you know with the council Pontius Pilate and you know the story went through all kinds of things until he died even the death on the cross the cross is a very interesting place I have taught you the cross is the place where both good and bad people meet there were three crosses there at Golgotha and there were three men there one among them was Jesus and the other were thieves so be careful who you talk about on the cross you might be talking about Jesus the cross is a mysterious place like the prison where both good and bad people are hallelujah Jesus 
Number six, giving you examples from scripture. The Bible talks about Peter, the early apostles. Now, Peter in Acts chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4, know the story. That's the story of Peter. The Bible says, Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Reading to verse 4, it says verse 2, and he killed James. Can you imagine? James, the brother of John with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And verse 4, the Bible says that he apprehended Peter and he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending that after Easter he would bring him forth to the people. You would think a great apostle who just preached, Peter preached the official sermon to launch the manifestation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How would a man filled with the Holy Spirit, mentored directly by Jesus, received they were the first fruits of the ministry that ushered in the dispensation of the spirit and yet this man was now bound as a criminal kept in prison hallelujah do i talk about paul and silas in acts chapter 16 that this man the bible says that they went to preach and they found a certain damsel who was possessed by the spirit of divination and by the authority of the spirit they casted that demon out and then the bible tells us that as a result they will lay them they flog them and put them in prison you can imagine paul and silas in prison bound hand and feet many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered them from them all. Now, please listen carefully. I wrote something down here. I said, believers must be trained to know and respond to these periods of affliction and challenges. Believers must be trained. Because you see, we live in a world where because of the loud proposition of our victory in Christ, most believers are at a loss when they begin to face moments where they cannot understand what is happening around their lives, their families, and many believers have turned away from the things of God because of the negative situations and circumstances around them, their lives. Because they've tried to find meaning and perspective as to why some of these things, I understand the affliction of the sinner, the Bible says, mark the wicked, their end is destruction. So I don't need to ask why the wicked is being punished. I don't need to ask why the wicked is being destroyed. But the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The destruction of the sinner is imminent. Based on God's justice system and based on the laws of the spirit. Because the Bible says that... Um, how does he put it now? It says, good understanding procured favor. That is um, Proverbs 13, 15. It says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. The transgressor is the violator of God's principles. So when people violate principles and become wicked, their end is already predicted from scripture. Now, but how do you reconcile the righteous seeming to go through the same experience as the wicked? in the face of challenges what then is the excellency of righteousness what then is the excellency of godliness by reason of what i do almost on a daily basis without exaggeration i receive calls and text messages from people many of them believers seeking explanation communicating their various annoyance and lamentations as to many things that may have befallen them from bereavements there are people who have lost loved ones and some of the loved ones at the point of death they were saying by his stripes i am healed and yet they still died how do you explain that to a non-believer how do you explain people who got into all kinds of trouble because they refused to give bribe or collect bribe? They stood for their integrity and made up their minds that they would not compromise. And you would think their refusal, you know, their, their, their rejecting compromise should immediately bring them to elevated positions of honor. Many of them went through declines, sadly, even unto death. How about Matthiadom? Those who stood for Jesus, even at the point of death. Hallelujah. 
How about believers who have trusted releasing their hearts, releasing their all? How about believers who emptied their accounts, serving the purposes of the kingdom? And there seemed to have been a boomerang effect that has affected them when the pandemic struck. It, it hit believers, it hit unbelievers alike. And let me tell you the truth. If explanation and perspective is not given to this, we are going to lose many believers in the days that come. Because many people will be confused. I understand the affliction of the wicked. But it is difficult to understand the affliction of the righteous. Hallelujah. As a man of God, I have seen miracles, all kinds of manifestations of God's power. And I'm indebted to God eternally for trusting us with this grace and apostleship to do the things we have done. But I have had to stand and weep with people at their funerals. I've had to comfort families. I've also had to, you know, just keep quiet and give God the glory. Because in, in spite of the spiritual intelligence and the grace given, we have been confronted even as men of God with situations where it is wisest to just be silent because any other thing you say will be a communication of foolishness in light of that kind of catastrophe. There are times that believers are so plagued with certain situations that the best way, the best way is just to say, Lord, we thank you. We may not understand, but we thank you. Hallelujah. I have studied this myself and by the Spirit of God, I have come up with five keys. And this is really the core of my teaching tonight. I want you to please pay attention. I guarantee you that you will need this teaching in your life and with it you'll be able to help others. And if you're a man of God here, please lend me your attention because you will be confronted with situations that will require this level of spiritual understanding. There are five keys that are found from Scripture that is able to help the righteous to not only manage afflictions but to turn that affliction to victory even in the spirit you see we agree from scripture that challenges are not unusual in fact here's what jesus said in this world you will have tribulation jesus is speaking he says but be of good cheer for i have overcome the world this is not a prophet this is not some apostle this is jesus the christ himself saying in this world there is a guarantee that you will have this and that tribulation he says but be of good cheer i have overcome the world hallelujah there are five biblical keys that the Bible gives the believer as the keys that will help them to experience victory in spite of or in the midst of challenges. Are you ready for the five keys? Pray in the spirit for one minute and ask the Lord to open your understanding. Give us understanding even by your word. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, the righteous businessman, the righteous apostle, the righteous prophet, the righteous mother, the righteous student, the righteous politician, even the righteous nation. Hallelujah. Key number one. Key number one. Are you ready? The first key that the Bible gives, now you must understand that the word of God is not a recommendation. That the word of God is not an opinion. It may look like a recommendation. It may look like an opinion. But for the believer who wants to walk perpetually in victory. The word of God is life. The word of God is instruction. It says my son pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. It says do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of of your, your your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life not to everybody to those that find them and health even to their flesh so you must take the word of god as final authority as touching anything the word of god presents the mind of god concerning any and all matters are we together number one the first key any believer, any righteous person who is going through a season of affliction, doesn't matter what it is called, the first recommendation from scripture is to look 
unto Jesus. Please write. As simple as that sounds, do not assume you understand what I'm saying. Just write and listen. To look unto Jesus. To look unto Jesus. Now we can read Psalm 34, beginning from verse 1. Look unto Jesus. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of and hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. 5. It says they looked unto him. Is that in your Bible? And they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6. It says the poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Reading to 10. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Verse 8. It says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Verse 9. O oh, fear the Lord ye his saints for there is no want to them that fear him. Final verse. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. It says, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Say loud, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says to look unto Jesus. You find that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, he says, the author and the finisher of our faith. Please look up. I can tell you it is very difficult to look unto Jesus in the face of challenges, tribulations. What does it mean to look? Now pay attention. To look means to direct one's gaze and focus towards someone or something that's what it means to look to look means to direct one's gaze to direct one's focus away from other things towards someone or towards something but then to look also means to rely on or to depend totally upon when the bible says look unto jesus Number one, it means to set your gaze upon him, not wavering whatsoever. But number two, it means to depend and rely totally upon him. Even when you do not understand him, look unto Jesus. The biblical recommendation for managing seasons and moments of affliction. Look unto Jesus. The Bible says... There is a very strange and interesting story. You find that in Numbers chapter 21 from verse 4 down to 9. The Bible talks about the nation of Israel that when they came by the way of the Red Sea, the Bible says to compass the land of Edom. The soul of the people was discouraged because they kept walking endlessly and it looked like there was no victory, no rest for them. They were hungry, they were angry, and the trouble started from verse 5. Reading to verse 9. The people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, there is no water, and our soul loathed this light bread. Verse 6, the Bible says the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. He says, pray unto the Lord that he takes away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. How did God answer the prayer? The Lord instructed Moses and said, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten when he looketh upon it shall leave. What kind of an instruction is that? What is the relationship between a serpent, a brazen serpent, and healing, and life, and victory? It was not about the serpent. He was teaching them that there is life and dominion in trusting God's plan, in trusting God's way. As foolish as it is, once it is God that has spoken, he's saying even in the midst of the fiery serpents, the wisest thing to do in front of a snake is to run away, not to look. Hallelujah. 
it is stupid for someone to sit down and watch a serpent crawl around you are we together now and it's about to kill you the wisest human instruction is to run away not to look at some serpent somewhere and yet that is the foolishness of God's path he was teaching them that the ways of God may not make sense but in them there is life look and leave my brother leave look to Jesus Christ and leave it is recorded in his word hallelujah it is only that you look and leave Apostle, you have no idea what is happening in my life right now. It's on account of my faith in Jesus that I'm in this trouble right now. Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. To depend upon him. Psalm 1, 2, 3 from verse 1 and 2. 1, 23, 1 and 2. The Bible says, Unto thee lift I up mine eyes. O thou that dwellest in the heavens, verse 2, it says, Behold, as the eyes of the servant look upon the hand of their masters, it says, And as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon thee, O Lord, until that he have mercy upon us. Can I tell you? There's no time, but probably let me just give you three scriptures that helps us to know why should you look unto Jesus number one is found in Psalm 127 I hope I've not lost you we're still looking at the first reason or the first recommendation from Scripture to look to Jesus Psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2 says except the Lord builds a house I am showing you why you need to look unto Jesus that they labor in vain that build it and except the Lord keepeth the city the watchman walketh but in vain verse 2 says it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow for he giveth his beloved sleep why do we need to look unto Jesus Romans chapter 9 and verse 16 it says it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy that means no matter what else you do you can stretch your human imagination from border to border if God does not show you mercy everything you are doing will end up being moving around in circles hallelujah why do we need to look unto Jesus? Psalm 62 and verse 11. I have spoken once and twice have ye heard that power belongeth to God. When you look unto Jesus, you are looking unto the only person, the only God who has the power to do something about your situation. My Bible tells me some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name of our God. This is true. Men can want to help. They may be sincere on that, but do they have the power? Hallelujah. Someone say, look unto Jesus. Let me give you one more scripture. Why do you need to look unto Jesus? At times of adversary at times of pain psalm 133 from verse 1 behold how good and how pleasant it is psalm 113 my apologies 113 113 113 praise ye the lord praise ye his serv the servants of the lord praise the name of the lord verse 2 it says blessed be the name of the lord from this time forth forever verse 3 it says from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name of the Lord is to be praised and uh how -huh. we're reading to verse 9 the Lord is high above all the nations and his glory above the heavens watch this now it says who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high verse 6 who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and are in earth seven who raised the poor I'm showing you why you need to look unto Jesus God is the only one who can raise men, the poor, out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That he may set him to sit with princes, even the princes of his people. Verse 9. 
He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. This is what he can do. When you look unto Jesus, it may sound like foolishness in the midst of challenges because there are many times I have taught you here when God is silent, the most difficult phase in the believer's life is when God is silent. Even though he is the word, there are times God is mysteriously silent. And I've taught you that the silence of God is also a language. You must know what God is saying when he's not speaking. Because when God is not speaking, he's saying something. Look unto Jesus. Now let me give you a word of caution. We're looking at five keys. And the Spirit of God had to put it in my heart to write this down. According to Matthew 11 and verse 6, it says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Can I tell you? If you've not had the temptation to be offended in God, it's either you are really a baby or you've not lived long enough on this earth. Because there are moments in your life when you feel, it's, it's almost as if you feel cheated for loving Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Watch this. John was the prophet who ordained Jesus to ministry. It was revealed to John. John had the secret code that would identify Jesus. When he saw Jesus by prophecy, he said, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Now John is locked up, caught see Herodias, the daughter, as a birthday gift. He was locked up and was about to be beheaded in anger. When the disciples came to him, you know what he said? The same person who identified Jesus, who announced him, he said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? That is what offense can do. The man who ordained Jesus in ministry, in fact, he trained some of the disciples who would later be the disciples of Jesus. And yet he said, Jesus, for I, I've, my pain vetoes every vision I have about you. My pain vetoes anything God told me about you. I am in a moment of pain. You claim to be the Messiah and now I am locked up in prison and you do not even have the courtesy to come and visit me. I hear a rumor that as a birthday gift, my head is going and you do not even show any sign of concern. Take that message to your Jesus. The disciples come to Jesus in a crusade ground. And says, sir, we don't mean to embarrass you, but there's a serious situation. The man who announced you most, the man who cried out and said he was the voice who was sent to bear witness to you, is in total doubt of you right now. What can destroy a man's ministry more than somebody who loved you and endorsed you openly? And is now saying, go, I'm not even sure of what I laid hands on. And the Bible says, Jesus... With calmness and intelligence, he turned and began to lay hands, healed a few people. He said, go and tell John what you see. The blind see, the deaf hear, and so on and so forth. The gospel is preached. Then he says, 11 verse 6 now, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Lord, where were you when I was losing my job? Where were the angels of protection when my loved one was being attacked by terrorists or died in a car crash? I don't mean to get you emotional, but I'm just, I'm discussing on the afflictions of the righteous. Lord, where were you when for the sake of my integrity as a man of God, I seem to have gone down? Where were you when Potiphar's wife was all around Joseph and because of his integrity, he didn't go to the palace, he went to the prison. The afflictions of the righteous. How do you explain Joseph holding a woman's, uh, the wife's, um, what they call it now? Her veil or whatever it is he was holding. How could he say that he did not have anything to do with her? That was evidence enough. And yet God was watching in heaven. How do you explain Hannah crying year after year? going to Shiloh. How do you explain that? 
how do you explain God's people under the rule and bondage of the Egyptians many are the afflictions of the righteous let me tell you this the believer is not a believer because of results the believer is a believer because you have committed yourself to trust in Jesus hallelujah look unto Jesus is the first biblical recommendation I've had very painful experiences in the lives of people as I as I serve the purposes of God and sometimes you know when they can't see Jesus you who is the closest to him based on what they perceive whatever they would have told him is what they tell you hallelujah since I cannot see Jesus you claim to be the one who has come in his name you better be prepared to help me convey to Jesus and I will tell you loud and clear where was he when this happened I know many people who I called in maybe the face of bereavement and whatever and I say can we say a word of prayer and they say apostle with all due respect please do not talk to me about anything prayer now and I know that they don't mean it it's just what pain can do hallelujah I heard about the story of someone who had an accident and he had to rush out and he stood watching his car burn and it burned to ashes there was absolutely nothing he would have done and that was a car that was like two months old what was the value of dedicating the car in church they poured oil on that car and it still burnt after two months How about the business of believers that went down from COVID and some of those people were great sponsors of the gospel now just follow me I'm a good pilot who will land well you just follow me hallelujah hmm. how about a man of God who gathered sick people and shouted in the name of the Lord that they will be healed and laid hands on them one by one till they arrested him and threw him out of that place and he left that crusade ground as if he was leaving a funeral where is the Jesus I kept shouting and talking about? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just playing with words, nor am I playing with your mind. I'm revealing something that may be someone's situation right now. And you know, in the midst of challenges, you forget every title you have. You forget every, even Jesus wept. Very disturbing scripture. John 11, 35. If you see Jesus weeping, will you not cry too? That means you are in trouble. John 11 35 the comforter of those who were always weeping is now weeping it doesn't matter why he's weeping the fact that you saw tears coming out of his eyes hallelujah life wept hope wept victory wept the fountain of wisdom wept. Weeping always carries a, a picture of limitation. When people weep, it seems to communicate hopelessness or despair. And the Bible says Jesus wept. As God, he never cried. But when he became a man, he cried. Jesus was angry. The Bible does not hide his frustrations. He went into the temple and flogged people in anger. He caused a fig tree because he was hungry and came to the tree and the tree would not deliver. And he caused that tree. Look to Jesus. Listen to me. There will be moments in your life where you truly will not be able to find answers intellectually. That's why there is a realm of peace that surpasses all understanding. That means that peace is beyond the realm of arguing what is this, what is that. Remember at the apex of, of, of Job's problem, the wife was even confused. She said, curse God and die. And Job said, no, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? He said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I don't know what is happening to me. Different people came and started communicating several opinions and Ellie who one time shot them and he said you guys I respect you I wanted to speak but I have a limitation in age he said but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty make it men of understanding Job himself 
who encouraged himself in the Lord got to a point where he was angry and when you read chapter 38 the Bible said he summoned God he said God I finished comforting myself we need to talk please come and explain to me the reason behind this pain and the Bible says God came in a whirlwind and a discussion began hallelujah look unto Jesus number two depend on him number two now let me give you number two commit to prayer even in the midst of pain even in the midst of hopelessness even in the midst of despair commit to prayer that is the second point James chapter 5 and verse 13 James 5 13 is any among you afflicted let him pray the Bible says let him pray when you see afflictions you see despair you see all kinds of things he says to pray it is difficult to pray when you are in pain that is where spirituality is tested lord i do not know what is happening but i pray i pray hallelujah first thessalonians 5 17 he says pray without season first thessalonians 5 17 pray without season someone say prayer shout it again say prayer prayer. prayer is very very powerful when you do not know what to do pray it is in the place of prayer that direction comes when you do not know what to do pray pray even in the spirit pray in your understanding i don't know where the solution to these bills will come from there's already a death sentence around my life and my children health wise you do not know what to do pray the Bible says the biblical recommendation for managing affliction is to pray. Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. It does not take a certificate to pray. It takes hunger and passion and the recognition that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Say pray. pray. Commit to prayer. That is the second biblical key every time you do not know what is happening in your life that is not the time to start running from pillar to post discussing things with people who don't have the power to solve your problem can i tell you the truth running around will only deplete the energy that is left use that same energy lock the door and begin to pray and sometimes you honestly may not know how to pray you may allow your tears do the prayer and while you sing or you may allow prayer to just come from any material while you soak in the glory there pray 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 I thought I would get the job now this is the 10th year 15th year 5th year without a job pray someone in the hospital has already said forget about me just focus on the children as for me I'm going pray Listen to what I'm telling you and please take it seriously. Pray. Man of God, since pandemic, it looks like your ministry just went down. The key is to pray. Discussion may be consoling, but you have to pray. You can pray yourself to comfort. You can pray yourself to faith. Prayer is like exercise. Nobody likes it, but you have to start. Once you start, something happens to you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and reeds What a privilege to carry everything to God. Most people will do any other thing but pray they will cry which is human and which is okay but they will not pray prayer has nothing to do with um, whether you have the appetite and the desire it is a requirement you must pray number three let's hurry up is God speaking to someone number one look to jesus meaning depend on him even when you do not understand him the word trust is the word bata trust in the lord that means to throw yourself at him expecting him to hold you 
and like the Hebrew boys, that even if you do not deliver us, O King, we have made a determination that as far as Jesus, as far as God is concerned, we will not bow. That's why you see conditional Christianity is dangerous. The kind of Christianity that says, God, I will only serve you based on the fact that you bless me. No. God is a covenant-keeping God, but our love for Jesus and our love for the things of the Spirit must be beyond the results that come. That even if I'm in the midst of fire and rescue does not come, let it be that I die trusting him. Are we together? Number three, what is the third approach to dealing with afflictions as a believer? Are you ready? Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. Joel, Joel, J-O-E-L, chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. It says, let the weak say. Hold on. Where do you have the strength to say when you are weak? There is always strength to say, even when there is no strength to do. You may not have the strength to do, but God will always ensure that the strength to say remains with you. That when you lose every kind of strength, there is within your spirit man the strength to say. The strength to say gives you the strength to do. Let the weak say. Let those who are crying say. Let those who are discouraged say. That means in the mind of God, there is no situation that happens to the believer that should make him lose the ability to say. There is always strength enough to say. Let the weak say, I am strong. He never said, let the weak say strength. I am strong to personalize it and to believe it. Let the weak say, I am strong. Isaiah 3 and verse 10. Isaiah 3 and verse 10. Say unto the righteous, the same righteous with many afflictions. He said, say to that righteous, that it shall be well with him. Someone say it must be well with me. In fact, say it is well with me. Prophesy to yourself, say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that it is well with me. Don't mind what the devil is saying. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that it is well with me. Say unto the righteous that it shall be well with them. Yes, I know I will come out of this. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the person in debt say, I will come out of it in the name of Jesus. Because thanks be to God that causes us to triumph. Say unto the one who has lost the breadwinner in their family. Father is gone, mother is gone, and you are alone. I may not see wind, I may not see rain. But one thing I know is that my valley shall be filled with water. Because there is Abba, the one who never dies. And the Bible says that if he can cloth the lilies of the valley and feed the birds that do not sow and do not reap, they are violating a fundamental spiritual law. Yet in it they never lack. Hallelujah. Meditate on and speak the word. Can I tell you, when you learn to speak the word, it's not a Pentecostal suggestion. Speaking the word is part of the frame. Do you know, God is very powerful and he has taught us. The Bible says he created us in his image and in his likeness. His likeness means to function like him. And all through scripture, we see God create by speaking. He blesses by speaking. He restores by speaking. He lifts by speaking. Every time God opens his mouth, something leaves his mouth that ministers life to creation. The Bible says even for man that he breathed upon that man. To breathe upon the man does not mean he used his nose. He opened his mouth and life came and entered into that man. Are we together? Speak the word. Psalm 107 from verse 2 and 3. 
Psalm 107 from verse 2 and 3. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. It's not enough to know so. You must say so. Whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Verse 3. It says, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and the north and the south. Say so say so in the name of jesus i'm coming out of this situation in the name of jesus the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of i may not understand what is happening to me but in the name of jesus the bible says all things work together for my good i expect glory at the end of this confusion i may not know what the process is all about but i know the end that the end is glory and is glorious and upon that i place my faith learn to say so Learn to say so. You don't say what is happening. You say what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Is someone learning? That means as you return back now, you can carry whatever is the, is the basis for the challenge, the affliction, whatever it is. You continue to make declarations. Even if it looks like it's a hopeless situation, like death, because the most um the, the the most hopeless thing that can happen to a man as far as this side of god's kingdom is concerned is that the person passes on to glory so physically you may not see the person again even at that you may not have the person back again but you can decree and declare in the name of jesus i know that the comfort of the spirit is at work in this family it may be a difficult thing but by the power of the holy spirit with each passing day strength is released upon us and whatever role that person played in the name of jesus God will come through. God will raise men in multiplied ways to play that role. See, there is a way the believer was designed to function. When you allow emotions to drive the vehicle of your Christian life, you will end up being a disaster. Sincerely so. You will need to push emotions aside and peg yourself at the word of God. No matter what you feel, that which God said, you must say. Are we together? The word confession comes from the word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. And the purpose of repeating it is for creation, not just for emphasis. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Is someone learning already? I'm giving you biblical keys. Number one, I said, look unto Jesus, depend totally upon him. Number two, commit to prayer. Number three, meditate upon and speak the word of God over that situation. Over that situation. Because every situation has an ear. And believe me when I tell you, it can hear the word of the Lord. Are you ready for number, number four? Now listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Number four, seek comfort, prayer, and help from friends and the family of believers i will take it slowly seek comfort the righteous now in the midst of affliction seek comfort comma prayer and help from godly friends and from the family of believers this is you can start this because it is a very major secret to overcoming affliction seek comfort prayers and help from friends and the family of believers in acts chapter 4 when we read from verse 21 please give us acts chapter 4 and verse 21 remember when peter and john were threatened as a result of the man at get beautiful who had been healed so when they had further threatened them it says they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people for all men glorified god for that which was done next verse it says for the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed 23 and being let go they went to their own company everybody said their own company so they had a larger community of believers where they could resort to to find company the bible says and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had done and together as a company 
verse 24 now the bible says when they heard the company they lifted their voice say they not just the one person he came to a company of believers and they could find comfort they could pray together they lifted up their voice unto god with one accord listen many believers do not survive afflictions and tragedies and negative situations because they lack these four points many believers do not have a larger company of friends and like-minded believers did you know it is a terrible thing for a believer to not be connected to a larger body of believers because when when disaster strikes like this no matter how powerful you are you will need the company of believers to shield you and encourage you there are times the sermon you hear will not come from yourself it will come from someone else speaking to you are we learning first thessalonians 5 and verse 25 it said brethren pray for us there are times that as much as you may want to pray for yourself, you may not have that energy. But there should be some brethren that you can honestly say pray for us. Even though we are apostles, do you have the brethren that can pray for you? Do you have the brethren that can love you, that can come and shield you? Hallelujah. Philippians 1.19. Philippians 1.19. For I know, Paul is speaking, that this shall turn to my salvation. How? Through your prayer. Paul, the prayer warrior, is saying, I require the prayer and the shield of other believers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. For this fourth point, I wrote something very interesting here and I please want you to listen. I said, living an isolated Christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity living an isolated christian life hallelujah an isolated christian life in ecclesiastes chapter 4 when you read from verse 9 to 12 it talks about the power of unity two are better than one it says because they have a good reward for their labor reading to verse 12 for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him up it says and again if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone? Verse 12 now, it says, And if one prevail against him, it says, Two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. Living an isolated Christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity. Can I tell you, having brethren, having godly friends, and having a family of believers, who love you and know you and support you will require you sowing seeds of love, sowing seeds of care, and sowing seeds of help to believers too. You have to make those investments waiting for these days. Now, let me tell you the truth. The proof of your being connected to a spiritual family is not attendance, it's genuine connection. Connection that is proven by service and your own impute also attendance does not mean you have a spiritual family have you registered your impact by registering your love by registering your care who knows you are there who has been a beneficiary of your kindness there are many people who attend believer meetings but nobody knows them enough to come and knock on their door and say i heard that you have been crying for the past two days you have blessed me too much i will not leave this place your home is my home your tears is my tears let me tell you woe betides a man who has not spent his life investing and sowing seeds of love seeds of kindness because you will find do you know there are believers who go through pain and they go through it alone because they have not made any commitment to anyone nor any spiritual family enough no track record of service no track record of giving no track record of prayer no track record of support they just freelance participation unfortunately for those people who are betides that believer do you know there are many believers who have cheaply come out of affliction because of the power of a larger body of believers why is your face gloomy like this 
I've not been able to pay my rent. I'm not an irresponsible person. It's just that things have been happening in my life. How much is the rent? Ah, I'm even afraid to say it. It's 1.5 million. And you may not even know the person you are talking to. He will say, come and see me tomorrow. You thought he will give you rent. He will give you the key of a house and say, I have watched you. Every time when it's time to collect offering, I see your service in the house of God. I, you always have that smile, that glow when people are sad. I've taught you that challenges are as large as the ignorance of the victims. You see, invest in strategic relationships. There are many of you who will not call on anybody. When you hear that people are sick, it's none of your business. When you hear that someone is in trouble, it's none of, once it does not affect you, it is none of your business. No. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. And you'll be making investments and you will be surprised. Moments where you need help, the body will come and wrap their hands around you and say, no, let that sword pierce us instead of touching you. You have made too much commitment. There was a woman in the Bible, you remember? That some, a woman who died in the Bible and people came and said, look at what she, this woman cannot die. Who will continue doing this? Can I tell you? You can prolong your life using your kindness and benevolence. Your contribution to the program of God can be so significant. God will not allow any devil to take your life. Are we together? This will require you sowing seeds of love, sowing seeds of care, sowing seeds of help to many believers matthew chapter 5 and verse 7 it says blessed are the merciful jesus was teaching he says for they shall obtain mercy galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 there is such a concept as the household of faith it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men. Say, do good to all men. Then it says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Can I tell you, you have heard me say it, but let me repeat it. If your absence is not missed, it means that your presence was not contributing much. You know that you are an active contributor to the program of God because people should be able to detect your absence. Where is that lady who always smiles on Sunday, whose glow can even, if you are sad and you look at that lady, where is she? And someone says she lost her mom. He said, well, I don't know her, but let me know where. Can I send something to that lady? Believers are quick to wrap their hands around people who become active contributors to the growth of others. There are others, listen to what I'm telling you. This is very powerful. It is a terrible thing to not have a friend, to not have somebody who loves you and believes in you, who can cry. You see believers go through situations alone. No. Let me repeat number four again for emphasis. Seek comfort, prayers, and help from godly friends and then from the family of believers. It's a culture in this ministry to make sure that all who are genuinely connected to this ministry as much as possible are shown the care and the love that is needed as much as God can grant us grace to do. I do not believe in using people. I believe in people being blessed. And for as long as God grants us the grace, we'll continue to extend hands of love and benevolence all wise as much as God grants us grace. Hallelujah. Growing up, I used to wonder why our parents and elderly people, every wedding you see them there, every burial. And you are wondering, what, is it that you know everybody? They return back and they say, I'm traveling somewhere. Who is getting married again? Uh, one woman like this, I used to know her in 1971. I heard that her last one is getting married. And that's why you are traveling to the south. They return back. They are moving from pillar to post. And in our foolishness as children, we thought they were just wasting time. Can I tell you, you know how much you are invest, you've invested in people because like Gideon, when you blow that trumpet, 33,000 people should show up. Why are you crying? My child has not been able to go to school. No, not under my watch. 
please allow this i will leave this child's education to me i remember when i was in primary school i remember you were there for me can i tell you the truth the law of seed time and harvest works powerfully powerfully there are many today your carelessness of yesterday has become a padlock to your destiny it locked your destiny and threw the key away that every time you want to move the memories of your carelessness of yesteryears, I'm praying in this service in the name of Jesus that the God of all mercy will show someone mercy. Yeah. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Yeah. The body of believers. Don't just be an attendant. Be connected genuinely in truth. There is always something that you can do to add to the smiles of believers and build quality godly relationships how do you do that by being friendly i have taught you and by being an active contributor to the growth of people practice the law of honor don't downplay and demean people and expect them to invest their time and attention during the days of adversity no people will reciprocate based on their perception of who they think you are are we together this is very, very important. As tired as I can be sometimes, there are people, if I see their call and I, I see their text, I will make efforts to get up and respond. Why? Because I love everybody. But the truth is that their participation and their contribution in my life is not at the same level. Are we together now? Yes. What investments are you making now for those days? Man of God, does somebody believe in you enough to say, I will never watch you in shame. No matter what it is, I will come and wrap my arms around you and make sure that I stand by you to see that this rent issue or this financial issue gets out of the way. Can I tell you, depending on yourself by yourself to come out of affliction and challenges may end up burying you there. Sometimes you will need, even if you are Jesus, you will need Simon of Cyrene to help you carry that cross to Golgotha. And woe betides even a savior who does not have help. Is someone learning? Build godly relationships. Be kind. Be loving. Don't just be anointed. Don't just be a prayer warrior. Don't just be a word giant. In the face of affliction, people do not care. I have taught you, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People will not come to help you just because you're a prayer giant, just because you're a word giant. Sometimes it's that sense of compassion and honor and empathy and you will be surprised how people will arise to come to your rescue. May you never lack helpers. I'm prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, may you never lack helpers. That at every point in your life, may there be someone who can arise genuinely and sincerely. I've taught you in discussing destiny helpers, let me do a one minute recap. I have taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run through them very quickly. Number one, they first are called divine connectors. They do not have the solution to your challenges, but they know who has that solution. And they always are bridges. For instance, the slave girl connecting Naaman to Elisha. Divine connectors do not have the power to solve your problem, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. And statistic tells us that everybody is maximum of four people away from where your solutions are. No matter how serious that problem is, four people strategically arranged will connect you and your solution. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers, men of influence. These are men who have the credibility, they have the track record, they have the ears of the territory. Their endorsement about you and their speaking over you can rewrite age-long narratives in a moment. One person can sign a signature and say, truly, this man is supposed to go to prison, but at my influence, I write something and that's it. Can I tell you, God still works with men who, and there are men who are gatekeepers, whether they are believers or not. I've told you that there are gatekeepers you don't cast away. God grants you favor to be able to pass through them. 
Some of you have been grounded at this point. Afflictions have remained indefinite in your life because you do not understand the power of destiny relationships, the power of destiny helpers, men of influence. One person, his signature can give you a job. His signature can veto whatever limitation and grant you access. Everything you see on earth is controlled by men. Behind every system is a man. And that man has a will, he has an emotion. Even if he's the unrighteous judge that was in Luke 18. A man who does not fear God nor regard men. That's a dangerous man. May you never meet such a man in your life. I say, may you never meet such a man in your life. A man that does not fear God and does not regard men. You can't talk to him about God. You can't bribe, you can't do anything. You're in trouble does not fear God, does not regard men. But the Bible says a weak woman came and used a strategy to weary that man away until he avenged her adversaries. There is always a man behind every system on earth. And let me tell you, when God wants to help you, he gives you access to great men. Don't insult great men. Don't insult rich men. Don't insult people who have paid the price to rise to certain positions. Rather, obtain wisdom by God and say that God should strategically position you. Joseph, you need Pharaoh to manifest your destiny. Daniel, you need Darius, you need Nebuchadnezzar to manifest your destiny. And these are systems and people who God himself recognizes. Are we together now? Number three, you need gifted men. I'm teaching, I'm just doing a quick recap on destiny helpers to buttress point four you need gifted men especially for many of us here who are businessmen or even men in ministry one gifted person can save you financial leakages one gifted person can bring efficiency to your life beyond your imagination the best corporations in the world sometimes are behind them are a few intelligent people who are making global impact redefining civilization the whole corporation is sharing the glory but the truth is that the brains behind them may not be more than four or five gifted men finally and maybe not most importantly, but more importantly, burden bearers. I told you that the assignment, burden bearers are not after your titles. They are not after whoever or whatever you are. They are after you as a person. Burden bearers may not be able to move you forward, but they have an assignment to stop you from going back. These are men who will cry with you. These are people who will see your nakedness and still cover you and cry with you. May God send burden bearers to your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him from them all so the charge here is to build godly relationships and to make meaningful contributions within the spiritual family that you find yourself you are in koinonia here make i'm not talking of finances finances about the least contribution you can make your prayer your participation that through your life someone is loving jesus through your life someone is encouraged someone who would have left the things of god is now drawn back through your life hallelujah can i give you the last number five what is the fifth biblical strategy when you are in a season of adversity of any kind, engage the prophetic. Engage the prophetic. Engage the prophetic. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. One more time. And by a prophet, the Lord. It was the Lord that did the deliverance, but he used a prophet. And by a prophet was he preserved. Every time believers went through seasons of adversity, seasons of affliction and tragedy, midwife in their breakthrough were the ministry of prophets. Is it the exodus of Israel from Egypt? Is it the axe head floating in 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7? Hallelujah. Is it the wife of the Shunammite 
uh, I mean the, 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 the wife of the sons of the prophet? Is it the Shunammite woman? Is it the widow in Zarephath? You can name all of these people. Is it Samaria? The land of Samaria going through famine. Every time there was affliction, a negative season, whether to people, whether to nations, whether to businesses, affliction can never turn to victory, isolating the prophetic genuine authentic apostolic and prophetic ministry has a role to turn people's captivity around it is a mandate and a mantle that god has placed listen to me let me assure you god has anointed men god has laid his hand upon men men that if you believe and open up your heart to receive of the spiritual investment in their life i guarantee you like night becomes day affliction can turn to victory right before your eyes the prophetic is a potent ministry in spite of abuses when i say the prophetic is a combination of the apostolic and the prophetic yes there are abuses across the globe yes we hope that god especially in africa will fix some of these excesses and these mistakes here and there but do not make a mistake of throwing the baby and the bath water the, Jesus needed three major prophets in his life to emerge. One, Simon of Cyrene. Two, Anna the prophetess. Three, John the Baptist. Jesus as the word. You ignore the prophetic, especially in the times of adversity. You do that to your detriment. One, prophetic declarations. Do you know? I've told you, when I sit back and I watch people share testimonies, you would think that because God used me to birth this testimony and this has happened so frequently, I should be used to it. Sometimes I stand as a spectator and I'm watching the wonder-working power of God that with one utterance backed up by the anointing of the Spirit, like that which will come upon someone this night, in the name of Jesus, that you'll see doors just like that. Because, listen... The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. He confirmed the words of his messengers. One prophet stands over Samaria and says, by this time tomorrow. He was not speaking to a company. He was not speaking to a region. He was speaking to a whole nation. And a foolish advisor stood by the king and said, no, this cannot happen. Let me tell you the truth. Be careful what you say cannot happen. The kingdom of God is a compendium of infinite possibilities waiting for you to engage with understanding. And one of it, I assure you, is the prophetic. I have watched with all humility people rise from grass to grace by the, at the instance of the prophetic. I am a beneficiary of the prophetic myself. speak and doors just open oh let it be well with you let doors be open and that's it i'm telling you it is it's still a wonder how the prophetic works that one declaration and the spirit of wisdom moves in motion and even if it is four lepers the holy ghost will begin to arrange insignificant conditions that insist and ensure that you come out of that situation you're not the first to go through a financial situation. You're not the first to go through an embarrassing situation. You're not the first to go through a health challenge. Listen, the Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that is to come. I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture, there is absolutely nothing happening to you that is happening the first time. The Bible chronicles men and women who weird afflictions until they wrought victory out of them. That time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shot the mouth of lions women who receive their dead back to life the bible says the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that i will come out of this hope that i will have the last laugh hope that the ministry will rise again even if you are samson your hair can grow again even if they pluck out your eyes listen there are three things they, would, they were supposed to remove from Samson to destroy him. Satan did not remove the third one. And that was what brought the greatest victory. His hair, his eyes, his hand. His hair was cut off. His eyes was plucked out. But his hand was left. And it was with that hand, he said, God, no matter what I've done wrong, 
grant me one last time and while the hair was growing back the eyes could not grow back but the hand came and he pushed the Bible says he killed more people in his death even if you are Mephibosheth who went through I've taught you about Mephibosheth the mystery of the carelessness of a midwife Mephibosheth's tragedy was not because of his carelessness a midwife did not handle him well and he made him cripple there are situations you may be having right now that you do not have any active role in making it happen they met Jesus and said who seen that this man was born blind was it him or his father Jesus answering said neither but that the glory of the Lord will be revealed the Bible talks about a widow who was losing all the men in her life had lost her husband now had lost her only son her life was shattered but just when they were about to cross the gate of Nain, here comes Jesus when you see Jesus you see hope when you see Jesus you see restoration when you see Jesus it is a symbol that light can come at the end of darkness listen to me a 33 year old body was hanging on the cross and you would think that was the end of it even Satan believed that was the end. Men believed that was the end. Kings believed that was the end. Principalities and powers believed that was the end. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. Provided you are righteous, there is a guarantee that the Lord, that the Lord shall deliver him from them all. From them all. Financial afflictions, marital afflictions, ministerial afflictions. My Bible says, many not few many are the afflictions of the righteous hallelujah sit down we'll soon pray one of the most tragic renditions of affliction in the bible was the story of the man job you would think that after losing his sons and his finances that would be the end of it the bible says another conference was held in the heavenlies and again, Satan demanded to touch and afflict his body. And boils began to come out of the body of Job that could not be explained. Everybody ran away from him. Do you know what it means to be the greatest man in the East? It's like maybe, let's say for want of what, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and then you see them on the streets of somewhere in the United States, and you say, what happened to you? And he says, in one day, not one year, one day, everything crashed. The friends of Job ran away. The family ran away from him. Everything that was, where were the people that he raised in his journey to becoming great? They ran away. It was only him and his wife. The same way it was only Jesus and Mary. And then the Bible says, Job 42, hallelujah, and verse 10. This is the Jesus we serve. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. I don't know who I'm prophesying to, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who is able to turn night to day. Let every captivity in your life give way in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every captivity in your life give way in the name of Jesus. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? So when you see any believer, whether a man of God, whether a businessman, whether a family going through affliction just ask them are you the righteous if they dare say yes begin to dance and rejoice in the midst of the storm and they will be wondering what is the meaning of this madness you tell them that i came for koinonia and i heard a message that many are the afflictions of the righteous but there is a guarantee that the lord not an angel the lord will deliver him from them all hallelujah let's finish job 42 10 and the lord turned give it to us the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends and the lord gave job 
twice as much so God can do that God can go that far to give me twice what I have lost he never said twice money twice influence twice anointing twice joy twice grace anything a man lose the Bible says God can restore don't you think I'm motivating you this is a prophetic word that no matter what it is listen you may say apostle but the person I'm talking about has died God can bring ten fathers ten husbands God can bring one person that is equivalent to ten sons I know you may never see your loved one again because they have gone but you find comfort number one that you will meet them again but that in the interim as far as shame is concerned it is not you that will see shame I can imagine passing through a place called Lodaba you would have seen a popular crippled man called Mephibosheth and you look at him and say what happened to you then he would begin a story it's not my fault maybe I would have been a great man but the midwife as my mother was bringing me forth the midwife was careless and because of the carelessness of that midwife my limbs became crippled never to walk again but one day this same Lord again a king is sitting in the palace and he becomes restless the king called David out of the many things that would have occupied his mind he begins to think and say is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness Saul is long dead and he spent his life persecuting me because the mantle for kingship had transferred to me however is there any man in his house and they said there is nobody oh however there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth and immediately he sent for Ziba he said Ziba go to Lodeba go and fetch that crippled man you did not bring anything unclean to the palace of the king but he said for this one you are exempted they brought the man and he thought they were going to kill him what have I done now I don't even have the energy to fight or look for trouble why is the king looking for me so this is how my life is going to end not knowing that this God once you are the righteous the Bible says that the Lord will deliver you from every affliction he brought him to the palace listen when he brought him to the palace he said Ziba you have 15 sons their assignment to be to farm and make sure that there's endless supply for this crippled called Mephibosheth but as for you you will dine with me here all the days of your life so don't be surprised that after this service someone calls you and says I don't know what was happening to my spirit but in the name of Jesus God has said to stand by you in ministry God has said to restore the battle you have been fighting for 10 years for 20 years finally comes to an end many are the afflictions of the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous look at me never become ashamed of your battles Mm -mm. it is common to all men fight the marital battles with dignity fight the academic battles with dignity I know that you may be an orphan stand in integrity and fight the fight of faith don't act as if you are it's, it's a unique thing oh you are a man of God and probably it looks like ministry is not growing don't be ashamed stand tall and fight it with dignity I'm a man of God but four of my children are wayward and it's, it's a bad testimony don't worry many are the afflictions of the righteous you fight with faith Lord I dedicated these children to God Almighty now I hear that they are drinking all around and wasting their life I call upon the one who turns the affliction of the righteous and you begin to pray and sometimes you may be discouraged and you find comfort within the body of believers listen let me advise you and I'm doing this by responsibility let me advise you make sure as a believer you do not add to the pain of people in church are we together now when you hear that people are going through things and issues in their lives your assignment is not to be a rumor monger multiplying people's pain 
okay yes the child is behaving he's not a responsible person he's all around doing all kinds of things what can we do as a contribution that's a believer's response i may not know the family but let's hold hands and invest a two minutes prayer oh lord for the sake of your name let this man of god not see shame and all of a sudden they will tell you that the child came for koinonia and it did, did not matter what overflow he was seated at that the power of God fetched him out and that was the end of that demonic thing. And you watch that one Saul now becoming Paul. Listen, I don't claim to know everything but let me tell you sincerely, I have watched God transform people. I have watched people's night become day. I have watched the relegated in every dimension become nobles, become people of dignity and honor. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Jesus. One more time. Listen. He's the creator of the universe. What can you do? What can you do? Jesus. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? Jesus. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, look at me. If you had seen some of us, maybe some 15, 17, 18 years ago, you would never imagine that would be the same people being used by God. I don't know who has concluded about you. I don't know what devil. I know you may not carry a semblance of the palace, but when you are chosen, you are chosen. It's as simple as that. The lifter of men, the lifter of men, the one who can wipe away the tears of men. Listen, listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something good can come out of Nazareth? Whatever Nazareth means to you, Apostle, right now. I'm in a network of all kinds of problems. I have financial problems. Maybe I'm suffering with the police. Maybe in ministry. Perhaps you've not even been doing ministry properly. You are just playing all kinds of games around ministry and things have not been working well and your life has plunged down right now. Like Samson, I assure you, provided you can answer that name righteous. My Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mama, hear me. I know you have cried and you have cried over your children, cried over your job, promotion that is due 10, 20 years you've not been lifted. You are looking for promotion when God is talking of restoration. There is a big difference between promotion and restoration. Promotion means to go higher. Restoration means to gain time, to be brought back to where you would have been. Hallelujah. I want you to believe this because the next five minutes I'm going to pray and prophesy over your life from the depth of my spirit. We have been given the grace to bless, to speak and to create possibilities. This is the assignment of the prophetic. And listen, don't you sit down and say, Apostle, you don't know the trouble I'm in. I'm owing 10 billion, 100 A's. Even if it's 10 Naira, it's still faith that will bring you out. Apostle, can I rise again as a man of God? I started walking in the prophetic, but I got, I dappled into all kinds of things. And right now, it looks like that grace is not there. We're wrongly mentored and we're just playing games. Provided you answer that name righteous, something can still happen. How about those trusting God for the fruit of the womb? How about those trusting God to end all kinds of yokes and curses, family curses, marital curses, financial curses, ministerial curses? This is why he sent you here. This one thing I know about God is that God lifts, is that God restores, is that God is able to wipe the tears of men. 
that you look at your former self and you cannot even know again that people look at your life and your life becomes a sermon everybody who looks at your life a series can come out of your life and people can say you mean this is what God can do everything I've said is found in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of man the lifter of man no matter what i'm going through i will hold on through the storm i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of man of God you will rise again because you are the righteous businessman you will rise again because you are the righteous I speak to every family here north east south and west you will rise again ah that statement e cupboard that has been used over your life the departure of the glory that men look at your life and it looks like is a warning and a lesson to others this God that you call Olowo Bogoro, the one that can turn the life of men around. When God arises from his throne, he says, let God arise, let God arise, let God arise, and all his enemies be scattered. Let God arise, and financial affliction scattered. Let God arise, and every curse and every yoke be scattered. Can I tell you, let men laugh at you while you look to Jesus. Let men laugh at you while you pray. Let men laugh at you while you speak the word. Let men laugh at you while you enjoy the comfort and the blessing of the church. Let men laugh at you while you receive the prophetic. You have received the spiritual combination. Victory is a formula. Something plus something plus something plus something is what equals the manifestation of victory. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm not wasting your time. I want you to listen very carefully to me. There are many of you here, as beautiful as your clothes may look, as wonderful as your faces may look, it's like there is, you are, you are being torn apart by situations. Maybe someone is watching me from a hospital. You have served God with all your life, but here you are by yourself or with a loved one. And literally that loved one is going or maybe there is a family right now that has been bereaved and as I'm speaking right now people are just crying and saying God where were you you've taken the pain and the sorrow away. you've given me peace and denial no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my everything oh man
Hear me. Please look at me. Do not be afraid of your wounds. No. When you see a patient in the hospital about to go through a surgical procedure, no matter how healthy that patient is before that time, you lie down as though you are helpless. And then once the anesthesia is given, sometimes the patient is even sleeping, losing consciousness. And watch what happens. The doctors can be there for hours, removing things, replacing things, all kinds of bypasses happening. And at that point, if they told you that were a human being, you would not even believe it. I've had the opportunity to watch a few delicate surgeries where they had to literally take part of a man's skull out and walk on the brain, walk on several things, you know, remove tumors and all of that. And sometimes you see heart bypass surgeries and all kinds of complicated surgeries for hours. And literally you are watching a supposed dead body there. You would think that body would never come back to life. And while the doctors are working, sometimes they themselves become afraid because of what they see. But then eventually they seal that person up and in a few hours the person just wakes up and pain and from one moment to the other and after a few months that same person is running around and you cannot if you will never believe that person was once there can i tell you the truth you are not the first to fail in ministry everybody has had a share of, of failure and pain you are not the first to fail in family i know your marriage is about to tear apart all kinds of things are happening and you are wondering lord but i love you i've served you all my life probably you are someone you are a student you are not doing well you love the lord you have options to compromise i was touched when i heard the testimony of the gentleman who was here said he bought all kinds of rams because you are looking for results and you see the thing sometimes with the body of christ is that we're experts at multiplying the pain of people when you find people who are going through seasons and moments of pain this is a call to the body of christ we must learn to be people of love it does not bring glory to god when we continue to celebrate the pain the downfall whatever it is of one another that's not the way the kingdom works once upon a time the disciples were going with jesus and they saw some other people doing ministry and they did not understand what they were doing and the disciples requested for permission from jesus should we call down fire on them because you are the only one it's only your voice that should be heard you are jesus and truly jesus was the voice and yet jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of in other words that's not part of your ministry i'm here to heal i'm here to mend i'm here to lift i'm here to bind Man of God, don't be ashamed of the fact that you are serving the Lord and it looks like there are financial issues. Don't worry. The God of heaven is bringing wisdom and is helping you. You may become the discussion of many people, but it's good they are aware so that there will be witnesses when you rise. They will say, this one is not fake. I saw it. I saw the man needing millions of dollars for their building. And I, I saw how God raised people mysteriously. I saw how the children, none of them could go to school because of poverty. But I also know through their life what favor is. That one person stepped into the family and rewrote the story. I don't know what you are going through, but the Lord sent me this morning and this, this night to speak to you and to let you know that the word righteous and the word affliction is not strange. The word righteous and the word affliction sometimes can go hand in glove. But it is defeat that should not be. That you never, never settle and say, I am finished. Don't use that word for yourself. Jesus already said it for you. And he never said, I am finished. He said, it is finished. You are not permitted to say I am finished. You only say it is finished. You may cry, but I want you to know that God is the lifter of men. 
my life is a testimony God raised some of us to be an inspiration to a generation that you should not make a mistake to doubt God only a fool will say there is no God if you ever doubt whether God can help men my life it is written on my life Ebenezer God who can help men hallelujah so as you see the businessman right now battling with loans battling with trouble what you should do as a believer is to invest prayer and to encourage them you will come out of it a politician who lost election maybe somebody who things didn't work out for don't find joy in adding to the pain of people it is an antichrist luciferian spirit are we together don't worry man of god Oh, I hear you were doing ministry, playing games and doing all kinds of things. But I'm happy that you have now repented genuinely. You can start from where you are and the God of heaven can lift you with the dignity of kingdom integrity. I hear you are a business person and you lost the deal. Things have gone bad. I hear you are a lady who, who, who always have to sleep around to raise money, house rent. But now I hear you have made up your mind to work with God. Don't feel bad. God can help you right from where you are. Can I tell you? When anybody laughs at you, just verify if you are still the righteous. Once you find out that you are the righteous, give God praise. Because I can assure you that sooner or later, anybody who laughed at you will have to bury his head in shame forever. Can I pray for you now? I really want to speak over your life tonight and I want you to believe it. You're going to pray one prayer that in the name of Jesus, every discouragement, every mountain that stands before me, I announce to you that I am the righteous and therefore I am coming out of it. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Following online, pray. Azaria family, make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Someone is speaking as a man of God, a businessman, career person, politician, parent, whatever the situation is. It says, let the weak say, so the weak can say. The weak may not be able to do. The weak may not be able to rise. But the weak can say. And the moment you can say, all other things will begin to fall in line. Someone open your mouth and pray. Speak over your health. Speak over the failing business. Speak over the marital issue. Speak over the ministry issue. Speak over the job challenge. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Someone is praying. Many are the afflictions. Someone pray in the hospital. You are in the hospital, but make sure you are praying. You've lost a loved one, but make sure you are praying. You may be crying listening to me, but make sure you are praying. You may be discouraged, offended with God, but make sure you are praying. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Nigeria, Africa, I know things may not be as we want for now because of all the economic issues there, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. I dare to say Nigeria is a righteous nation. Therefore, the Lord will deliver him from them all. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the righteous man falls seven times, but he leaves them with an assurance that he will rise. That the righteous preacher can be afflicted. The righteous mother can be afflicted. The righteous family can be afflicted. The righteous business can be afflicted. 
the righteous laborer can be afflicted the righteous prophet the righteous apostle the righteous teacher the righteous pastor the righteous evangelist you find out you're a man of God and it looks like there's some sickness in your body there's nothing to be ashamed of don't join all this hypocrisy and all of that you pray get people to pray you need to go to the hospital go to the hospital and treat yourself with nobility it does not make you less anointed take responsibility over your life and your health while you are trusting God to strengthen you a day will come you will overcome that realm of that epileptic condition you can stand strong but until then you owe yourself a responsibility to be serious your child is wayward don't be ashamed and don't be afraid believers can come and stand by you we can pray and cry together and say lord we will not lose this one to the devil hallelujah yes your business falls up it looks like things are going wrong no problem go and listen to my message principles of restoration there i teach on five reasons why people lose things there are things you may need to learn there are corrections you may need to make there are all kinds of things but by all means let that word i am righteous the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am righteous and because i am righteous the bible says even though the afflictions are many it leaves me with an assurance that the lord delivered him from them all it never said from them it says from them all you will hear testimonies of people who will come and tell you i did not believe that God could bring me out of this there are many of you who will sing and dance with tears coming out of your eyes because you, you know you will look at what God is doing in your life and say God even me there's a song we used to sing is it too high take it down for me he says I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me even me. Listen, I'm indoctrinating your mind to believe that if there are two people on earth and they say, Who does Jesus love? you should have it at the back of your mind. Be indoctrinated with this revelation. I've told you. If God says he's going to bless 10 people in Koinonia, I will start praying for the remaining nine because I know one position has gone at the instant of that statement. It is the truth. I have convinced myself to believe that he loves me. It's not just some emotional blind thing that does not have a basis. When I had a revelation of what he did for me on the cross and that even though he's exalted Lord and King, he doesn't want to take a chance he's still making intercession for me was that not what job did for his sons paradventure that's the responsibility of a father it may not look like it but you will rise it may not look like it but you will shine it may not look like it, but in the name of Jesus, I am praying for you. Listen, let me pray for every parent here. In your lifetime, you will see God lift your children. I'm saying it from the depth of my spirit. And while I'm speaking respectfully, some of them are in beer palace right now. While I'm speaking, some of them are somewhere, maybe internet fraud. While I'm speaking, some of them have vowed all kinds of things. Don't worry if the prodigal son could come back home. I assure you, by the God of heaven who delivers the righteous, I'm praying again for every parent. In your lifetime, you will have a cause to rejoice. Hallelujah. Now, before I speak over your life, I want you to mention the areas. I leave you with God for the next one, two minutes. 
what areas of affliction have you seen in your life that you truly desire that the Lord will take this out of your life I want you to open your mouth and pray I'm releasing my faith with you and I'm about to speak over your life you will marvel and wonder at the power of this God after tonight's service go ahead and pray he has given us the grace and the unction to speak being commanded to bless and this we must do but I like you to release your faith don't spare don't be quiet don't let the devil lie to you that God cannot bring you deliverance someone is praying is it your marriage is it finances is it your health is it your ministry is it a new level in your life is it your work with God your prayer life your word study life is it your family go ahead and pray it says to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known unto God in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for you now oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear oh speak from the heavens and I'll hear from the earth oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear my altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar listen I've shared with you my story when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me he stretched his hand towards me and light at his brilliance that light and it didn't it didn't shine on me it entered me when that light entered me how I survived and did not die is a question I will ask him when we go to heaven because no man can receive that kind of light and still survive. As I began to study on light through the years, I would learn that the light of God is the basis of his illumination. Remember, sight is the eyes plus light. Sight is not because you have eyes. If you enter a dark room, even if your eyes are correct, you would not see. Because it takes a union of an eye and light to equal sight so light entered me but then i also read from habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified it says and in that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power that the power of god hides in his light when you buy a perfume or you buy whatever product they don't give you the product that you bought alone usually it will come in a container Am I, am I right on that? Or a carton or some packaging. You don't really need the packaging per se. The beauty and everything. Sometimes you can buy perfumes that are so small, but then the whole packaging can look like you are carrying a, 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 maybe an AC or something, and you keep opening layer to layer, and there you find the small thing. It's when you apply it, you will know the value of that small thing as small as it is. Am I right on that? So when the word of God comes, contained within it is his wisdom contained within it is his favor but contained within it is his power 
so what he was doing to me Jesus was not just working on my mind and my spirit it was an infusion of spiritual power that it is from the abundance of that which we receive that we speak over people over cities and nations and literally shift the spiritual climate of men systems and structures no man can do this it's not just about speaking I'm saying this so that as I speak over your life you truly believe with your heart you can stand and spectate and yet nothing happens to you but your heart can be open the Bible says blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord we have not come just by ourselves we were sent and he said when I sent you lackest thou anything he equips when he sends are you ready to receive in the name of Jesus the son of the living God the one who has raised men and the one who has anointed men I speak over your life and I speak over your destiny every affliction that has brought you tears that has brought you shame that has brought you pain in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I decree and declare that affliction comes to an end now 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 He said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore I've come as a voice of restoration and in the name of Jesus I prophesy to someone between now and the end of June I stand by the God who has raised men the one who has given the grace to appoint unto men in the name of Jesus between now and the end of June return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies I program strange testimonies around your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to everyone in ministry here. I don't know what has brought you down. I don't know what is the area of struggle. But I prophesy to you, rise to the place of prophecy. Rise to the place of destiny. Rise to the place of prophecy. Rise to the place of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You may be here and your affliction has to do with losses and pains. You lost money. You lost things, you lost relationships, you lost opportunities. In the name of Jesus, like Samuel prophesied to Saul, I decree and declare, may that missing donkey, whatever it is, I command it to return back to your life. I command it to return back to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, you see, Look at me when it has to do with the world of men the way you pray over men is different from the way you pray over things because things were not given dominion so you can command them but when it has to do with men you can't command men per se because God honors their will are we together but there is a name God is called the father of spirits have you heard of that name before the father of spirits means every spirit can be summoned by him the body is a slave to the spirit even those who practice witchcraft know this when they summon people they don't summon their bodies your body can remain in the room there and they can summon your spirit and manipulate it and return it back to the body and you wake up a victim of what has happened in the spirit there is a name God is called the father your boss is a spirit you know that your business is first a spirit ah, yes sir james said in chapter 2 and 26 a body without a spirit is dead situations are alive because they have spirits connected to them if you separate that situation from the spirit the situation will die because it becomes a body without a spirit are we together i'm saying this because of the prayer i want to pray for you I may not have the power to command a human being to come to violate their will but I can say like Michael said the Lord 
rebuke you. So I can call on the God who is the father of spirits and cause him to summon the spirit of your destiny helper and insist that they find no rest till they bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and insist that they arise by the spirit and partner with prophecy over your life. I decree this in the name of Jesus Christ. The father of spirits. Watch him in action when he woke Ahasuerus from sleep. The Bible says that night could not Ahasuerus sleep because the father of spirits needed Mordecai to be blessed. Watch the father of spirits move and he granted a dream to Pharaoh and Pharaoh was troubled by that dream and he could not sleep until Joseph came to limelight, until Daniel came to limelight. When God moves as the father of spirits, men never rest until men are blessed. Mm. I'm praying it again. I don't know who has been ordained by God to be stationed around your life and your destiny. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I call on my God, who is also your God, from now to the end of June, may the Father of Spirits summon every destiny helper. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every negative spirit that has been attached to situations, prolonging them, there are situations that are no more natural. When, listen, listen. When spirits participate with bodies, they create longevity to whatever process there is. That means men can bless you based on the law of time and chance. But when the spirit of favor comes upon you, there is longevity to that blessing. It does not stop. Are we together? The same way, watch this. The same way, somebody you can get a slight headache just as because of a wear and tear of your activity but when a spirit partners with that condition it will now have longevity the assignment of spirits is to sustain processes to bring they are the longevity factors anything you see staying unnecessarily long is already an indication that there is a spirit component that disfavor has stayed too long there is a spirit component are we together now that business issue that can be solved in one day has taken three four years there is a spirit that one is within the office of the believer to deal with let me speak over you that every unclean spirit like the bible calls it a spirit that is not of the christ that has attached itself to any situation around your life manipulating it and creating pain i separate you from that spirit now I separate you from that spirit now I separate you from that spirit now and I decree and declare let the blessing speak on your life let the blessing speak on your finances let the blessing speak over your family let the blessing speak over your ministry let the blessing speak go and prosper in the name of Jesus rise and scale heights in destiny in the name of Jesus I speak life to your prayer life life to your word study life in the name of Jesus Christ no one under the sound of my voice will die prematurely I say it again no one under the sound of my voice will die prematurely in the name of Jesus Christ and for one last time let me speak favor over you for God's sake let your heart be open to receive in the name of Jesus I prophesy this grace that is called favor let it rest on your life let it produce extraordinary results men rise into your help men rise into your rescue God using men to roll away shame to roll away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Keep standing for one last time, everybody.
you are in this place tonight I started my teaching by saying my concern tonight is the affliction of the righteous the key word in all of this discussion tonight is the word righteous not even the word affliction your only immunity in doing business with God is that you willingly receive of his life thereby qualifying to be called the righteous this whole business of this night is about the righteous one who has received the abundance of grace like the Bible says even the gift of righteousness and this happens only through Jesus for the Bible declares that God so loved the world like we read earlier that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever the blessing is for whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting there are many people here by the Spirit of God who are saying apostle I came for service to be blessed but now I cannot say I am the righteous because I have not placed my trust in Jesus Christ. I want to make it right. You want to make that relationship right with Jesus, some for the first time. And for others, you are truly rededicating your life to Jesus. You are making this decision consciously. Wherever you are, I want to give you a minute. Leave your seat with all boldness and conviction. Remember, I told you there's nothing to be ashamed and afraid of. Jesus is able to give you a new beginning right now. Whether you are in Zaria, you're here in Abuja, all the overflows outside, and for our global family connecting from anywhere across the globe. I count one to five, and I want you to leave your seat boldly and come and stand here Jesus is speaking to you do not fight it win that war I begin my counting now one let's celebrate them as they come run to Jesus two come come your story is about to change by the lifter of men the lifter of men come to Jesus Please hold on through the storm Hold on to his word Your life will soon reveal He's the lifter of men The lifter of men Apostle, I want to come out but I'm ashamed of my friend I'm ashamed of my family Leave them and come this is a destiny decision. The wisest decision any man can make under heaven is to receive of the life of Jesus. The Bible says there is no other name given unto men by which we must be saved. Those who are following online, make sure you connect by faith. And as I begin to pray with them, I want you to participate very fully in the prayer. If you are coming, come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray now. I see people coming from outside. Please rush and come very quickly. Double up your steps so that you can make it and then we'll pray. Let's celebrate them.